It's time to become focused, not on our wants or complaints, but on God. In the silent places of my soul, I turn to God, for God alone is our rock and salvation. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the good news of God, saying the time has come, the realm of God is at hand. The realm of God is not very far from any one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. Jesus said, repent and believe the good news. The time has come. In the silent places of my soul I turn to God. For God alone is our rock and salvation. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rest my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. O people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Salah. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, and they are altogether lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion, and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Lord Jesus, the one and only Christ, you called many people from many walks of life to leave their own ways and follow you, to be your disciples and to prize people as something to seek, find, and restore. Lord, we hold your people before you this day. We ask that you would bless and, and keep those who are hurting and those who are struggling, those who are in the middle of grief and loss and mourning loved ones. Father, those in the middle of trials, medical, financial, and emotional, 
pull them to yourself, Lord. Hold them especially close. Let them know that they are loved and cared for. And Lord, call us as your people to come alongside them and to speak your words of love and care. And let them know that we care for them as well. Lord Jesus, the one true leader of every church, we choose to stand as one church, your church, and to lift our focus from our differences and divides. We will leave our own ways and follow you together. Support each other as we seek to be your disciples and work together to focus on fishing once more. Lord, we lift up our church and all of your churches. Lord, bless them. Call them to accountability and productivity. Lord, make us productive for you. Help us to truly be fishers of men and women so that more might know you, that more might enter your kingdom, that more might live lives of plenty and blessing. Lord, help us as your church to be faithful in ways that reflect you and not the biases that we carry as individuals. We ask these things in the name of the risen Christ. Lord Jesus, we must act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly together before you and each other for the sake of our worship of you and our love for each other in the future and freedom of all those living in poverty in want and in despair lord help us to be what you would have us be help us to present hope to the world and help us to so model it that the world desires it more than anything else. Lord Jesus, we ask for your Spirit's help with this. For we are quick to focus on ourselves and our labels and our differences rather than on the same nets in our hands and the same leader before us. Christ, have mercy in your precious name which unites us all let us live to honor your name. Amen.
We have two scripture readings this morning. The first one is Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. And when God saw what they did, how they had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Our second reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Good morning. Hey, most of us have probably been there, right? When we're home, uh, sometimes it's right before dinner. That seems to be a favorite time. And the phone rings. And the immediate response in the house is, who's calling? Uh, we have one of those phones that actually puts the name of the, the caller up on the phone, which we found tremendously helpful because probably three quarters of the calls, the name that comes up is spam, which means that someone trying to sell you something, it, I don't know how they sense it, I believe it's a call that can't be returned. Because uh, a lot of those, if, if you just let it go to a, a voicemail or something and you try and call them back, you'll find out it's, it's a phone number that won't take calls, won't accept calls, but only makes calls. And also they start using numbers that are, that are fake numbers. Uh, I realize that because I, I, I look at the phone and sometimes it'll just say Worcester, New York. And Worcester's not that big a place. So people will call and then they'll start talking. And uh, normally what I do when it's someone like that is I say, hey, you know what? I really like to do business in person. So if there's a small place, tell me where you are. I'll drive right down to your office and talk to you there. And they go, no, no, sir, we're, a, we're an international. I said, well, you called from a Worcester number. And a lot of times they'll just hang up at that point because they know uh, they've been called out on, on what they're doing. Uh, but it, it, it's exceedingly frustrating. And for those, those of us that grew up when telephones were like the pinnacle of uh, electronic devices in our homes, we, we remember differently than, say, our children and grandchildren do. I remember a time when the phone would ring, and you would let the phone ring, and you were at somebody else's house, and you'd jump up, and they'd go, that's not our ring. And uh, for those of us that have never experienced a, a party line, when someone says, well, that's not, that's not my ring. That's the neighbor's ring. My ring is two shorts and a long. Two longs, that's the neighbor down the road. And there was a time when three or four people would share the number. And when you were dialing them, they would know who was calling based on the ring that came through. Uh, and how far we've come now, instead of 
three or four families sharing one phone number and one phone line, individuals in a household all have their own phone, all have their own cell phone, and they, they carry it with them. Uh, the more connected we become as a people, it seems sometimes the less connected we are. Uh, I, I, I look around, and I, I mean, even on my cell phone, half of the phone calls to my cell phone are junk phone calls. They're trying to sell me something. Very concerned about my car's extended warranty. Uh, or, uh, because of the date of my birth, apparently now I'm on the radar of the hearing aid people. And I must confess, there's been times when, when they tell me who they are, I, I do kind of pretend like I can't hear them while on the phone and therefore I can't continue the conversation. I'm sure that drives them crazy, but I figured, hey, fair is fair. And, you know, after a fifth or sixth time you've been called to ask about a free hearing test and you go, I'm really not interested, please remove me from your list. And they say, okay, we've cared for that, but you're never removed from the list. And the calls keep coming. Uh, and maybe you've experienced that kind of thing where you say, hey, can you please remove me from your list? And yet you keep getting calls from all sorts of places which you'd rather not hear from. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about that this morning. We have two scriptures today. Uh, one of them is the scripture from Jonah. And we know what happened to Jonah. Jonah got a call from God and basically he blew it off. He, he ran. He, he, he ran. And we know uh, from the stories in Sunday school, he ended up in uh, the belly of a big fish. Some call it a whale. Uh, but it, anyway, he ended up there. And while he was there, he had some time to think and said, you know, God, if you give me another chance, I won't blow off your call. And the giant fish or the whale came to shore and spit him out. And he made his way back home. And that brings us to our, our reading for today. It says, and a second time, God called Jonah. I love that. And a second time, God called Jonah. It seems like uh, uh, when God has your number, there is no no call list. God will continue to call because he wants to know you. He wants to be in relationship with you. And this time, Jonah answered. We find out as we, we get in the story, he went to the city of Nineveh. He walked through the city, and it was a huge city. It said it took three days to traverse the city. If you figure uh, 12 miles a day at, 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 a, at a full day's pace on foot, pretty reasonable pace, this city was 36 miles wide, encompassed 36 miles of territory. And he walked through the city on the first day, he said in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. Nineveh will be destroyed. And the people heard what he said and believed God's word, took it to heart. Uh, they, they dressed in sackcloth and sat in ash pits and threw ash on themselves and had a national time of mourning, or, or, or at least a, a citywide, as a city-state, they had, a, they had a, a instituted time of mourning, all of them. And they came to believe in the word of God and the message that God indeed had sent through Jonah. Uh, amazing story. And you would think, if somebody's a, a preacher or a prophet, they come to town, they bring a message, and everyone responded to the message, he'd be thrilled. He'd be thrilled. It's like, uh, you know, Billy, Billy Graham came and he was at the stadium in Dallas and it wasn't just the stadium. The people left there and they went through all the city of Dallas and all of them were repenting. All of them were crying out to God. All of them were saying, we're sorry, Lord, we want to do better. You'd think it'd be a good thing. And Jonah's upset because he said, I came here to pronounce destruction on this city, and you're letting them off the hook. So uh, if, you're, if you're curious, you can read more about Jonah's story. But the bottom line is this. 
he was called, not once, but twice. And he answered the call the second time, but he did it sort of begrudgingly. He wasn't all in, he wasn't excited. And when he saw God move, and when he saw God work in the lives of people there, rather than being excited and positive about it, he was disappointed. He wanted to see that city crushed, brought to its knees, destroyed on his, uh, and partly because he wanted his word to be what the last thing they heard before they were destroyed. He was a messenger with his own agenda. And maybe uh, in our day and age, you've seen a few folks like that. The next scripture we have is Jesus calling disciples. And he calls uh, four disciples, Andrew and Simon, who later is called Peter, right? And John and James, the son, sons of Zebedee. Now the thing that they have in common is all of these men were fishermen. Uh, they all, that, that's how they made their living. It says uh, Andrew and Simon were actually fishing, casting nets. And then it goes on to say James and John, they, they were done fishing for the day. They were repairing nets on their father's boat. And it says Jesus called and they followed. They immediately followed. There's a sense of urgency to it. He's a, when he called them, he says, come, follow me. And they didn't say, oh, oh, I have to do this. What's the whole deal? What kind of retirement plan do you have? Uh, what's in it for me? He, he made the invitation, and their response was immediate and complete. It says, and they immediately followed him. And then he said, I will make you fishers of men. Now, I, I love that term. I, obviously, I have a, a soft spot in my heart for fishermen. Uh, fishermen are a, a category of people that are, I, I always termed as the eternal optimist. There are people that fish. Don't get me wrong. There are people that fish, and it's a hobby. And then there are fishermen. And a real fisherman loves to fish. A real fisherman is the one that will be out in a driving rain still fishing. A real fisherman is the one that you have trouble getting to come off the water at the end of the day. Sometimes I used to go fishing with people and uh, there were some folks that I fished with and they, they would come and we became great friends and we fished a lot. And there were other folks that it was a one-and-done kind of deal. Because apparently I am that uh, OCD kind of fisherman. That once I'm out there, I, I, I'm the, a couple more casts. And I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm told by some, I don't know when it's time to quit. When it's time to stop. A couple more casts. Because you, you never know the next cast could be the big one. The next cast could be when you connect. The next lure change. The next bait change. The next spot you come to. The next place you go. Uh, as the clock changes, I, I always think, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to fall into a feeding cycle. It, it, there was a time when uh, they made tables that talked about when major and minor uh, feed, feeding periods were for fish and game. And I used to look at those, and, and uh, some days were marked better than others. But the bottom line is this. Whenever I got a chance to fish, I would go and fish. I believe that Jesus indeed knew what he was doing when he chose fishermen to present the gospel and to, to teach to present the gospel to the rest of the world. He liked some of the attributes of fishermen, the optimism, the tenacity, uh, 
the willingness to stick through dry times and lean times and times when it seemed like the fish weren't running and there were no fish. And also a deep and abiding faith that no matter how many days had gone by without a sighting of fish, without a catch in the net, without a promise of uh, a catch, that the fish were indeed there. That's, that's the faith piece of it. You always believe there are fish there that you're fishing for, that you're fishing to. And Jesus chose his words, and the words that he used to say were, follow me, there's the call, and I will make you fishers of men. I will teach you to have the same enthusiasm, the same tenacity, the same optimism, the same faith that those you're after are present. I, I need all those attributes, and I can use them, and I will own them, and I will make you fishers of men instead of fishers of fish. Now, not only were Andrew and Simon and James and John fishermen, uh, they were apparently quite successful fishermen. They had a pretty good business going. Um, I, I, I say that because later on we find out as Jesus is, is in his ministry, uh, the mother of James and John helped support the ministry. And is a, is a woman of some means and funds, which would lead me to believe that the, the fishing business that Zebedee had was quite successful, was quite prosperous, and did well. There are several more times they'll be talking about fishing and, and using the analogy of fishing. Uh, and letting down nets and pulling up nets with huge catches. There's another time they talked about needing funds and they caught a fish that had a gold coin in its mouth that provided the funds that they needed. There, there are all kinds of scriptures relating to fishing. And because of that, uh, maybe when I was younger and I read it, uh, the scripture spoke to me because I love to fish. There's some uh, beautiful examples of Christ calling people and the way they responded to the call. And, and I want to assure you today that nothing you have done, that nothing you will do, that nothing that is in your past can put you on Jesus Christ's no-call list. That's not how he works. He constantly reaches out to the world. And that has always been God's M.O. Uh, I believe even in the time of Moses, when Moses was called to God by a burning bush. We have other old ancient prophets that heard God speak through uh, donkeys, that heard God speak in storms, that heard God speak in hundreds of different ways. But here's the, here's the thing, God was always speaking. He was always reaching. He was always calling. He was always wooing. And I say that because innately threaded into our DNA is a need to make that connection. You know, uh, certain, certain things have conditioned us. We're, 
were like Pavlov's dogs. You remember the, uh, the scientific discovery of Pavlov's dogs? He would ring a bell and then he would feed them. And then at, at a later time, when they'd been conditioned that way, he'd ring the bell and they'd salivate because they were getting ready for food. I'll tell you, friends, many times we're like that. We have been conditioned. And one of our, our methods of conditioning is the ringing of a phone. If you don't believe me, take a phone, put it out in a public place, and let it ring, and someone will answer. People just have to answer the sound of that phone. I mean, I mean it's a compulsion. We, we've been so conditioned. Uh, and, and sometimes, like I said, now we have the, the call waiting, we have the uh, display that says who's calling. Uh, for some of us, we have a, a watch or a Fitbit that, that says, hey, this is spam calling you. It shows up on your watch. And people go, well, aren't you going to answer that? And you go, no, no, it's just spam. It's no one I want to talk to. But the conditioning piece is still ingrained in us. It's still there. Okay? All those things that, that make us respond to a call. The other thing that we're conditioned to, every human being alive, is the sound of a crying baby. Particularly strong in moms. And we will go to crying babies. It's, it's just part of uh, what we're made of. We can't resist the cry, the call. So my question today for all of us is, uh, has God called you? And what does your ring, if you will, sound like? What is the call? Sometimes you'll hear it clearly coming through other people. I remember experiencing that. Uh, there was a time when I was uh, a youth group leader and worked specifically with youth, and, and I really resisted the call to pulpit ministry. And there were, were the routines that would come and have questions. And, and about scripture and about things in scripture and about life and we talked and they said you should be a pastor when you explain it I understand it and I went don't say that don't don't say that my wife used to raise her eyes a little bit and go are you hearing what they're saying and I said don't don't say that but I heard the call I had heard the call for years and I resisted Sometimes we get a call from God and we go, I'll get close. And close is good enough. But you know, a call from God is not like horseshoes. Close is really not good enough. We need to respond to our call. What we are called to. And everybody's not called to the same thing. But I believe everybody is called. So a couple things to think about this week. When have I heard God's call, even if I ignored it, even if I denied it, even if I walked away from it? Do I believe that God has put me on a no-call list? And if that's what you believe, I'm here to tell you that can't happen. It won't happen. And the next thing is to figure out what you're being called to. Because God calls us to things. Some people believe God only calls us from things. And you know what I found? Those are the people that just don't know God very well and don't know Jesus Christ very well. I had a lot of friends in that category because they said, well, I, I suppose I've heard God call, but that means I won't be able to do this, I won't be able to do this, I'll have to stop doing this, I won't be able to do this. They very much believe that God worked in the thou shall nots. And while there's many uh, thou shall nots for our own benefit, 
There's so many more times when God says, I want you to have more. I want you to experience more. I want you to know me better. I have treasures laid up for you that I want you to access now. I want you to know the feeling of walking in the center of my will and what a blessing it is. I don't want to take anything from you. Matter of fact, I want to give you more than you imagine is even possible. That's how a call works when God calls. We'll hear more about uh, the calls of all the disciples, but I, I just want you to understand, God called many times in different ways, in different places. He called different people. And he called them in such a way that when they heard his voice, they were like the people on the old party lines that go, that's my right. That's, that's the call I need to answer. That's someone that I want to talk to. Not only do I want to talk to them, I want to know them. And they want to know me. Hey, I hope uh, this week has been a blessing for you. I know uh, we've had a little uh, glitch with the, the COVID numbers going up in our area recently. Uh, and we pray for all of those folks that are, that are struggling with that. And I'm hopeful that we will return to uh, regular worship again very, very soon, maybe as soon as next week. But go this week knowing that God goes with you, that he's calling, that there is a really good chance that he's on the line right now. Bless you. Lord, bless you and keep you, my friend. Make his face to shine upon you and let you know the comfort and peace 